kill Aquaman and destroy everything he holds dear. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my Aquaman 2 teaser trailer video. They surprised us with an actual teaser trailer. They were about to set the record for how close a Warner Brothers movie was going to get to release before they actually started marketing it. In fact, I think they actually dropped this trailer because so many people were clowning on them for not dropping the trailer. Like, how close are they going to get to the movie before we actually see some footage from it? There is a bunch of Easter eggs here. They revealed some of the movie earlier this year, so I'll talk about that new footage too during this video. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Whatever they wind up releasing, I will do videos for it. Don't worry. We do have the big James Gunn reboot of the DC Universe. I think the last time I did an Aquaman 2 video, that was long, long before James Gunn had been hired and before they had this whole plan to reboot the DCEU with the DCU in Superman Legacy. And I also did a video a little while ago about Jason Momoa basically hyping up him coming back as a completely different DC character, even though he keeps saying that he'll always be Aquaman. So there is still a lot of questions about that. Will he come back as a Lobo in the new DCU movies, or will he still be a version of Aquaman when Aquaman eventually shows up in the new movies? Aquaman just showed up in the Flash post credit scene on that new version of Earth that the Flash created when he created like a mini version of Flashpoint at the end of the movie, but I don't think that that Aquaman is meant to be the one in this movie. They weren't super clear on that, but do not expect this Aquaman to be referencing the events of the Flash post credit scene. That's why I say it's probably going to be a different version of Aquaman, like this one is meant to be from the original Justice League Earth before it got changed by the Flash. They will release a much longer version of this trailer later this week, so I'll do another video when they release that. But starting with the new footage here, the effect that they're using for the transitions, this blue here, might just be a representation of the icebergs that are hiding the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis because it's supposed to be in Antarctica or in the Arctic. I'm not sure which one. There are seven kingdoms of Atlantis. We only saw six of them in the first movie. So this movie is all about revealing what happened to that lost kingdom. They mentioned it in the first movie. They said before the lost kingdom had been lost, when they were talking about the Great Fall, when Atlantis sank into the ocean. So Atlantis is the name of the city where Aquaman is ruler, but it's also the name of the nation of Atlantis of a bunch of different kingdoms that broke apart when it sank into the ocean. It's Atlantis itself, the city, then Zebel where Mira and her father are from, the trench, the brine, the fishermen, and the deserters. As the name implies, the deserters was that desert location in the Sahara Desert where they went to find the information on where to find the lost sea so they could get King Atlan's trident in his armor for Aquaman so that he could take the throne. This is Aquaman on the shores of some beach. It could be an undersea beach like the one in the first Aquaman movie. This is him swimming through the Lost Kingdom with a bunch of their soldiers. This is him still wearing the original suit from the first movie. This is traditional armor from the comics. They're saying that it was meant to be the ancient armor of King Atlan. He's going to have a couple different suits in the movie. One of them is a stealth suit. This looks like he's in the middle of a fight with Black Manta or someone else. He might be in Atlantis here. It's hard to tell where he is because it does seem there are a couple of big fight scenes that happen in and around Atlantis. There was a brand new scene or an old scene, however you want to think about it, of King Atlan fighting, which probably has something to do with the Lost Kingdom. Also, earlier this year, you may have noticed when James Wan was teasing the movie, he was posting pictures when they were filming. They were inside what looked like an iceberg or a glacier, and the title or the working title of the movie was Necris. So what is Necris? It's also called the Black City. It's basically a lost city that's like Atlantis, but that only exists on planet Earth for brief periods of time and sort of shifts between different dimensions, and that's why it's lost. Not only is it inside a glacier, but it's also shifting between dimensions. This is just Orm versus Black Manta's men. The undersea diving vehicles is meant to be part of Black Manta's arsenal. Since Aquaman and Orm don't need vehicles like this to survive deep underwater, there might be in Black Manta's base here. The whole idea with Orm is that he's been in a prison since the events of the first movie. Aquaman frees him and he helps him defeat the lost kingdom of Atlantis, Necris, the king of that kingdom, and Black Manta. But then you see him after a haircut in the same kind of gear that Aquaman is wearing and they're both fighting Black Manta's people together. So even if there's still a little bit of beef between them, it sounds like they put most of the past behind them. I think that was the idea at the end of the first Aquaman film. Like, look, dude, we're brothers, so let's put this behind us. Water under the bridge to make an Aquaman metaphor. Black Manta declares that he's going to kill Aquaman with the help of Necris, who gives him the upgraded trident and allows him to match Aquaman with Atlan's trident. So it basically just gets a bunch of upgrades to his arsenal that allows him to fight Aquaman with his natural powers. It looks like he destroys his father's lighthouse home. I'm not sure if he also winds up killing Aquaman's father or if he just winds up injuring him really bad. 
Whereas in the Aquaman post credit scene, they revealed that he had been found by Dr. Stephen Shin, who's an Aquaman villain of sorts in the comics. He's both an ally and a villain to Aquaman, saves his life, and then basically vows his revenge. So in service of that, you probably noticed how everybody got redesigned costumes, everybody got upgrades, even Aquaman himself. You'd think that the armor of King Atlan would be enough. No, we need a bigger upgrade. The whole thing with Black Manta's costume is that it just got destroyed in his fight with Aquaman, so it makes sense that he would want to retune his weaponry, his helmet, his armor, just to be a little bit better for the second round. The whole thing with Aquaman's brand new costume, I know it looks kind of dark, what's the deal here? Most people are referring to this as his stealth armor, like something is going on with the Lost City and he needs a stealth suit for whatever mission they're going on. The movie's going to be really big, so there'll be a couple sub-missions, a couple side quests during this too. Like you see them running through the desert, like they go back to the Kingdom of the Deserters to get more information on the Lost Kingdom. So it's not like they're just going between Atlantis and the Lost Kingdom, they'll visit some of the other seven kingdoms as well. We only briefly saw some of them during the events of the first movie. Because the working title is Necris, Necris is the Black City, they're implying that it's the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis. In the comics, the ruler of Necris was a person named Mongo, so I don't know if they're going to change that for the movie, because in a big movie like this, as silly as they might get with some of the moments as comedic, a name like Mongo just feels a little too silly. And in the comics, his whole MO was very similar to Ocean Masters in the first movie, you know, forming an alliance to fight the surface dwellers. But since we did that in the first movie, I'm not expecting them to recycle the plot of the first movie for the second one. This is him in the Arctic or Antarctica on a seahorse. This is meant to be his mother, Atlana, played by Nicole Kidman from the first movie, battling a bunch of Black Manta's men with the undersea submersibles, what looks like Necros's men from the Lost Kingdom. This might be their big battle in the movie, like something on par with the battle scene from the first movie. This might be Aquaman defending Atlantis against Necris and the other ocean creatures he commands. Like he's in Atlantis here and they are attacking Atlantis. Like this looks like Black Manta's men, maybe Necris's men from the Lost Kingdom attacking the highway into and out of Atlantis. Like there's a big attack on Atlantis itself. Aquaman on his throne, the green glowing area here looks like the Lost Kingdom being destroyed later in the movie. You can see the sheets of ice covering it. This might be from Aquaman's final battle with Black Manta using Necris's trident. Aquaman here using his powers to call the ocean life to help. Not really sure what he's doing with them in this particular scene, but he might be just calling them for a major battle. Then they end with the logo, the falling sheets of ice. They're just meant to represent the Lost Kingdom being unearthed. Let me know in the comments though, if Jason Momoa is going to come back in the new DC movies, would you rather see him come back as a version of Aquaman or would you rather him come back as Lobo or do you think he's actually going to do both? Because they could do a Thanos situation with Josh Brolin who also plays Cable in the Deadpool movies, even though he's not coming back for Deadpool 3, Kevin Feige didn't seem like there was a big problem with him playing both Cable and Thanos because one of them was a big motion capture performance. They could also kind of do that with a version of Lobo as Jason Momoa, but I do feel like he would be a pretty badass Lobo. Uh, four years, four years ago, I had the, the Jeep, Jeep out front. Yeah, yeah. Four, four, no, no, I don't want you. Four years ago, I was screaming, wasn't right, I? Yeah. Screaming when I left Warner Brothers. All right? Everyone's yeah. in the meeting. <laughs> four years again. It's a mystery, baby. We got, uh, I got some really good news. Great news with Warner Brothers. Amazing. Um, wish I could tell you, but here it is. Peter, I love you. James, I love you. David. Okay. Mwah. To the future. To the future. Baby! Picture me rolling. What was your meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran like? <laughs> uh, it's very, very wonderful. I'm in the house of Warner Brothers and they're, they, they like you know, a lot of stuff I'm doing and we got a lot of good things coming. Right, 11 more months until we get uh, another gonna, movie. We're going to have, yeah, we'll have Aquaman, which is funny. I, it's... The beautiful thing is I, I, me and my partner wrote the first treatment for it. It's about a 55 page treatment. And a lot of it has to deal with, you know, me talking to the UN, expediting what's gonna be happening with uh, the melting ice caps. And it's, there's no far off galaxy coming to destroy us. There's no aliens from another place. It's really just ah. the idea of us ruining our planet. And um, the fact that we all need to get it together and save, save our home. So, um, it's 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 fun. It's gonna be coming out in uh, this this December, and then uh, you know I'll always be Aquaman. <laughs> the, the rumors aren't right. I'll, I'll always be Aquaman. Ain't anyone coming in there taking shit? And then uh, there might be some other characters too. So oh, so we can play. I can play other things too. <laughs> I can be funny and savage and.
charming <laughs> once in a while. The other big thing of note in this movie is the lack of Batman post credit scene. They shot a couple different, a couple different Batman post credit scenes with different versions of Batman. There was one with Michael Keaton when it was a previous regime at Warner Brothers. Then another regime came in and they shot another post credit scene with Ben Affleck coming back, getting rid of the Michael Keaton post credit scene. Then James Gunn was hired to reboot the DCEU into the DCU and they just completely got rid of all the Batman post credit scenes. Mostly because those post credit scenes were intended to set up things that James Gunn didn't intend on paying off because he was rebooting everything. Maybe we'll see the deleted scenes of their post credit scenes at some point, but I'm not expecting them to put them on the Blu-ray or anything like that. Maybe someone will leak them and we'll get lucky. When they post the much longer version of the trailer later this week, I'll do a video for that, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Click here to learn about Robin showing up in The Batman 2 with Robert Pattinson, and click here for my Ahsoka Episode 5 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.